just going to introduce a few very basic notions in Python. So first off, um, if we want to launch a new script such as this one, let me actually just delete this again and, and show you how to do it. What we do is we can either click the plus here or we can click file new notebook. All right, and let's use a Python 3 kernel for this. All right, so I'm going to hit click M to switch this to a markdown cell and then I'm going to write something. A hashtag indicates a heading. So let's call it basic Python. And if you want, you can uh, write extra text here, some explanation, and you can even uh, type uh, in um, equations here, such as beta is equal to 3, or whatever you want to write. And it will pass later code for you. <clears throat> First thing that we do is that we import some modules that we might want to use. For instance, we're going to use pandas quite a lot, and we're going to use numpy quite a lot. These as statements allow us to access them with these abbreviations, pd and mp, which is the usual one. And let's also rename our, um, our notebook here. Let's call it basics. All right, so first off, let's go over some symbol basics. Uh, we can assign a variable such as x to have the value 3. So that if we uh, then print x, and when I'm creating a new, I'm creating and deleting these cells all the time, b creates a new set, cell below the one I'm currently in, and d, press twice, deletes it. But alternatively, you can click up here to add them. You can delete them, cut them out here like this, if you want to, by clicking these buttons. But I use the shortcuts quite a lot. And then I can enter X and click Control Enter, uh, and I get uh, the output three, or I can print uh, my output. I can go and let me do it as an F string. X is X, and it's printing the value of X. If I set it to be four, I can print that out. X is now four. Very good. Okay, so x is a variable here, and I can ask what is the type of x. And I can see that x is an integer, which means that it's a, a whole number. Um, it could also type 4.0. And then you can see it changes the format when it's displayed, and the type is now a float, which means a floating point or a real number. So uh, there's a distinction in Python between a float and an integer, and that can matter in, in certain circumstances. We'll get to that later. Um, a common thing to work with in Python is to work with lists, and they're displayed as such. And lists can contain all kinds of things. Here there's a list where the first element is 4.0, the second element is the integer 33, and the third is a string, hello. So this time around, the type of x is a list. But the type of the first element in x, which we extract by typing x of 0, is a float. And note here that x, when I'm extracting stuff from inside x, I use sharp parentheses as such. But type is a function, uh, and functions we call with soft parentheses in Python. So the type of the first element is float, the second element is integer, and the third element is string. You can also loop through the elements in x. Um, You can see that print is also a function, so let's just print each of them. This is how we loop through an element in X. <clears throat> that can be useful in many circumstances. All right, one of the um, more basic things that we need to do is we need to be able to do arithmetic. So let's say we create a variable X is 3 and Y is 10, 10.1. Then 
we can create a third variable z as the sum of the, the two variables x and y and we can print z and that went all right we could also do multiplications or we could raise three to the yth power we do that using a double asterisk maybe it's easy to see if we flip this around and take 10.1 and raise it to the third power that's just over a thousand perfect so that's basic arithmetic on scalars pretty quickly however we'll be wanting to work with uh, vectors so a vector x could be uh, an array a numpy array and we could for instance say we want 3 3.1 and 10.2 <clears throat> now x here's an array and we can see that the type of x is a numpy array so it means that x now has certain properties in it that a basic scalar does not for instance it has a property that's the shape of x and that's the uh, dimensions of it uh, but it also has one that's uh, what does it maybe it doesn't ending the number of dimensions of x is one so it's a one dimensional uh, and the shape is that it's a three dimensional uh, list so in python or in numpy if you're not specifying anything specifically then a vector simply has only one dimension so it's neither a row or a column vector it's just a vector if we want it to be either a row or a column vector we have to be explicitly whoops specifying in which directions uh, we want it to put uh, the dimensions so for instance and we do that using the argument np dot new axis so let me explain what happened here first off if i just type x of uh, dots when i'm or colon what i'm getting is i'm just printing all of x and what i'm doing down here is i'm uh, giving it a new axis uh, and here the resulting x vector will be three by one if instead i so this is in other words this is a vector that's standing up that is a column vector if instead i wanted a row vector i would go x of new axis uh, so i'm telling it that i want x to be in this direction and i want a new axis going down but i'm not putting anything in it so the shape of this thing is going to be one by three so that's how we make vectors into um uh, uh, how we make vectors uh, have actually two dimensions so be either column or row let's add a new vector and let's uh, give it the numbers 2 and 1 and 4 okay first off by a convention if you multiply the two uh, then we're going to get element wise multiplication so you can see that the first entry here is six um, which is three times two uh, and so forth so it's it's element wise multiplication if we want a, a vector product we want to use uh, the add operator and by default that's just going to give us the inner product but if we're a little bit confused about uh, uh, this means we maybe prefer to have them actually have two dimensions and let's uh, override x with and say that we want it both of them to be uh, standing up so that now you can see x is a column vector then I can no longer multiply them together like this because they're both standing up so the dimensions do not conform either I have to have y lying down that is like this dot t is the transpose operator which is a property that all uh, matrices uh, in numpy have so now I can multiply them together like so, and we can see that this is in fact the inner product of the two vectors, three times two plus 3.1 times one plus 10.2 times four. <clears throat> and I can also do the outer product if I want to. Then this matrix, the first element here, that's three times two, that's six, 
down here we have um, three times one because remember that y whoops y looks like uh, y is standing up and x is lying down so this element here is the uh, second element in y times the first element in x so three times one and so forth so that's how we multiply uh, these uh, vectors together in Python. All right. For the final thing, I just want to talk briefly about how we relate pandas to NumPy, because pandas is the, um, the default, or maybe probably the best module for working with data in Python. Um, and it has a lot of different modules for reading in uh, data sets. So let's use read CSV to read in our CSV data set and um, call it that as a data. So here's our pandas data frame. This is now a very different type of variable. You can see if we type, type that it's a pandas data frame coming from the pandas core frame submodule and it has all sorts of different functions and properties that it can do for instance it has the property shape we can also take the mean as if it has a mean function which will compute the average value of all of the columns that are numeric in the data frame and uh, we can also do we can pick one of the variable such as let's take the price and we can do a histogram so it has a lot of different um, functionality that just is automatically built into it uh, and all data frames are born with them but the data underlying this uh, data frame which has 35,000 rows is all stored as numpy arrays and we can pick out the individual columns either using dot notation or uh, using a, a kind of as a, as a dictionary uh, notation. Um, and what we're getting each individual variable out as a, is a very different thing. So if we call, let's call this X and ask, what is the type of X? We see that it's now a pandas series. One variable is a series. And a series is something that's born with an index and it has a lot of values and it also has a name and, and it still has a bunch of uh, properties and functions built into it as a pandas series but we can also extract the underlying data which is stored as a numpy array we do that by typing dot values um, and now if we print out x it comes in the same form as our numpy arrays that before and if we type type of x we can see that now it's a numpy array numpy arrays also have a bunch of uh, properties they also have a shape property they have a an endim number of dimensions we can see that this is a one-dimensional vector so it's neither column nor row it's just a vector and uh, it actually has a function called mean that computes the mean it does exact same thing as calling np.mean on x <clears throat> so um, so we, we get a lot of um, of built-in functionality to it um, and of course we can also use functions such as length they operate on uh, numpy objects as, uh, numpy variables as well so this is how we get from uh, pandas to numpy and if we want to be really clever about it we can actually give it a list of, of um, of variables we could take both the price and the volume variables for example here is the sub data frame and if we type the values here we can see that we're getting something out let's uh, overwrite x with this and see what is x it's a numpy array and x dot shape tells us that it's now an n by two matrix so um <clears throat> so with x we can immediately start computing x prime uh, x and this is our 
uh, design matrix uh, that we will be working a lot with in OLS. So that was a basic intro to Python.